Hello there, since I've been showing the hydroponic systems that I've got in my greenhouse in the last few videos I've had a few folks contact me asking how to build the vertical growing towers so this is just a video showing that process well really it's just a video of me cutting the holes and allowing the baskets to sit in the vertical towers the rest of it, if I show you what gear I've used you can work out yourself, the rest of it's easy that bit where you slot the baskets in is critical to get right so that's the bit i'll be focusing on and i will also kind of give you an overview of the system so you should be able to tell how it goes together if you've got any further questions by all means get in touch and i'll probably make specific videos on points that are a little bit more difficult but if you've got basic diy knowledge you should be able to put one of these things together Okay, so we've got the four inch pipe on the bottom of it. I've put a mark here on the other side and on the opposite sides. So that gives me four marks. And basically how I got the marks in the right places here is just by using a socket. That's one of the junctions that goes on. It would normally be solvent welded on with glue. But the good thing about these is they have little manufacturing lines all the way down here and again on the other side so you know that that is a directly opposite that then all you do is put a little bit of wood across here and mark your left and right it's difficult to see because I've used a black pen but I've just put little black permanent marker marks on there so as soon as I slot that over there I know exactly where to put the marks then I've got a stick which I've put 8 inch increments on just mark them in pencil and then all I do is get that lined up with my mark on here and then just eye it up so that it's level all the way up there or should I say straight you know even on this side and that side I draw a line with the pencil and then using my little 8 inch marks on here I then mark the correct places to cut the holes in the pipe. Now just so you can see this a bit better I'll just put black permanent marker marks on there. That's better. Okay so these are eight inches apart. So we're gonna have one at this mark all the way up. We're gonna have one up there and we're gonna have one there and we're gonna have one there. So we've got four lines that we need to draw all the way up the pipe. These are the little pots that I'll be using so I need to make a hole which is the correct size for these pots. I think these are classed as two inches or 50 millimeters and that is the distance from here to here. 50 millimeters or two inches diameter. Now because I've done quite a few of these before I know that I need, where are we, there we are, I know that I need a mark on here which is approximately eight centimeters long which I can then cut a slit into. So what I've done I've got a bit of paper and the distance from here to here is eight centimeters. That's the middle which is four centimeters and all I do when I want to mark this again I'll just use the permanent pen so you can see it. I would normally use pencil when it was a, a white pipe I'll just put that on there. I put the middle mark on the line that goes all the way up the pipe and I would mark one side, another side and then trace down the side of the paper. That gives me a clear guide on where to cut and that could be cut with a hacksaw or a, a, you know a half decent wood saw but not a bow saw or anything with like aggressive teeth. So you would just cut into there before you put your heat on. Now I'll show you what it's like once it's cut, but first of all I'll get all of these things marked up. And as you can see that is really quick to do. I was using a tape, you know like a rigid tape, and it was a bit of a nightmare, I just kind of had a guess. By taking a minute to make a little template it really does speed this process up because bear in mind each one of these particular pipes is going to have 20 slits and therefore 20 places for those little 
pots to go into. Okay, hopefully you can see the marks on there. Between there and there is eight inches. Because we've already got our marks on here, the one that runs up here, which is kind of 90 degrees to these first ones that we've done, uh, has to be in the middle here. If we put them up here to marry up with these, it's not going to work, and I'll show you what I mean. Right, this is what I've already cut. You can see that there's about a four inch gap between each one of these slits, and that's obviously at 90 degrees to that one. And then you've got another one, which is 90 degrees to that one, and you've got another one, which is 90 degrees to that one. So every side of this pipe is gonna have holes in for your pots. And because they're all pointing different directions, and they're all spread out, it means that your plants shouldn't really grow into each other too badly, especially if it's just little stuff like small varieties of lettuce. I'm just using an old wood saw. Now it certainly isn't the sharpest saw in my tool shed, but it'll definitely do for cutting plastic pipes. And all I need to do is cut from one end to the other, and then just make sure there's no big snots hanging off it that's gonna get burnt. This would be easier if you could put it in some sort of vise. Your open end of the pipe over there, if you could clamp that to the table, that would stop it rocking about. If you don't have a clamp, you've just got to have a good grip. Right, that's it. Then we can get the heat onto it. And that's where the interesting stuff happens. That's what we're using. It's a Bosch Easy Heat 500 heat gun. Other heat guns are available at a much lower price. Bosch is a very good make. I bought this because I want to use it to strip paint and all sorts of things in years to come. It's a sound investment. You can use little gas burners or anything, just as long as you're careful not to burn the pipe. So we'll put that on full power. Now this takes about two minutes of constant high heat to make the pipe soft enough to be able to bend and create the shape we need. Because we're going to shape it about two inches below the cut and about two inches above the cut, we have to heat quite a large area. It's got to be at least an inch away from the edge of the cut here and at least two inches above and below the cut to shape properly. Yeah, just put your finger on it, it's not super hot, but if you can gently deform the pipe, it's ready to, to use. It's ready to stick the other pipe into here to shape it. Okay, right. Now we'll get a two inch pipe with a roughly 45 degree angle. And we stick it in here, like that. Bend it around. And we hold it there. Ideally, we should have a wet rag, which I've forgotten to get, but we should have a wet rag to go over here and cool it down quickly to set the plastic. I'm going to have to wait. But because this thing's got a 45 degree angle, it sits in there securely. Right, that's cooled down enough so we can take that out. And look what we're left with. We're left with a hole that we can just drop a pot into and it fits perfectly. But in order to stop any water from getting sucked out and spilling over the side of here, we're actually going to use a little collar. 
We're going to solvent weld that into there. And then put the pot inside of that. I'll show you these when they're all glued in. Now we've just got to work our way down the pipe on all the sides where we've put the marks and do exactly what we've done here. So now all we have to do is just put our little collars in here. So we've got some solvent glue, solvent cement. I'll put a link to it in the video description. And we've got our little two inch collars. Ideally these would have been white. I couldn't get any two inch white pipe so I had to go with black. It's still fine. And all we need to do is just put a little bit of glue on the back side and the front side. No need to put it on the sides because this collar isn't going to touch these sides here. It's only going to touch the front and the back. Then all we do is just drop that in there and then we just push it down to the desired height which in this case is just about level with the front of there. And what that will do, it'll shed the water down the pipe. It'll kind of prevent it from coming out of the edges here because you can never get a perfect circular hole. It's always going to have the little smiley bits at the side here with little holes in. That little collar will direct the water down the main pipe. Right, so that's all the little collars in. It takes literally a matter of seconds to put each one in, so it's definitely worth doing just to hold those pots in securely. Just to demonstrate, that pot fits in there absolutely perfectly now. You can see all the perforations aren't impeded by the collar. The collar's only about three quarters of an inch deep by two inches diameter. So all the roots are gonna be able to come through with these perforations into the water flow. I'll just give you a close up on the tower as it is now. Let's take this pot out. See the roots are starting to come through there. And I've sealed this up with white silicon. Strictly speaking, it didn't really need sealing up, but I just thought I would do it just for neatness. I've got this switched off because when it's on, it does make a little bit of a noise with the, the dribbling water and so on. Yeah, there's another one. See, the roots are starting to come through. This is working really, really well. And this is just ordinary four inch drainage pipe in white. You can get it in black and you can also get it in orange as well. Just let you have a look up on the top there. See how the water gets in. That's just like an inspection cap type thing there with a screw thread on. I've got an elbow, one inch pipe, a one inch tap so I can get the flow right. Going to well, the other side is exactly the same and both of them meet up in the middle in a T-piece and that goes back to the pump. Now where the pump feeds up, it splits equally between these two pipes. One goes to one side and the other one goes to the other side. So by turning that, I can switch one side of these totally off or I can use one of the taps on the top just to isolate a specific tower if I only wanted one tower on this side operating. So I can have one, two, three or four going. It's very adaptable. That just feeds back to the pump in the reservoir. As far as the lights go, most of them are 20 watt, oh God, Barantia lights, I think they were. I just got them on Amazon. They're very good for leafy veg. And they seem to be, you know, these, these lads are responding to them. The ones on the other side are just lights I got off Amazon as well. These were more like full spectrum lights. I thought I would just try those in one side, see if it made a difference. And to be honest, it doesn't appear to with the leafy stuff. Now where the pipe comes down, it feeds into a four inch rubbery socket which is a reducer, taking it down to two inches. And then from there, I go into two inch solvent pipe and that goes back to the tank. Just go underneath, there we go. So that's feeding down from one of the towers. Oh, the hell over. We've got the other tower feed coming in to a T-junction and then that goes back to 
the tank. It's pretty dark under there. So all four towers feed back through that two inch pipe back into there. And this is very difficult to see, but there's my towers and here's my tank. It's pretty much covered up by pots of things and so on, but that is a huge tank. It's 375 litres. You don't need anything that big. I just got it because it fit perfectly into that available space once I'd built my benches. Now, one more thing I have put in this system is a cooling fan in the top. It's not on at the moment because the greenhouse isn't particularly hot, but that, when it works, will just push air down here just to stop it going foisty and that's controlled by a USB this is like a USB splitter so it's actually designed to carry not only information but also power and I've got four things plugged into there so I've got the two fans and then I've got two sets of these spidery lights they're on a timer everything's on a timer so that light and these lights come on roughly the same time for about 12 hours a day when it's hot the fan would be on all the time and as far as the pump goes i'll just try and give you a close-up so you can see it's on most of the time but where these little red things are pushed up that's when it goes off so, so it goes off at least every hour hour and a half just for 15 minutes, just to give the system a rest and really just to allow more air to get into the roots of the plants. I don't want them getting waterlogged. So it would normally be, oh, whoop, not, not, where are we there? In the middle, on the timer. Let's see if I can clamber up here just to show you what sort of flow we've got coming down. So this is roughly the same on all sides. So there's a reasonable flow, although the pump is capable of pumping much more. And that string is actually a mesh bag of plastic media, which just sits in the top six to eight inches of this pipe, just to provide a bit of good bacteria and just stop any ammonia that might be building up. Uh, it's the same in this one. In fact, it's the same in all of them. You know, you might be able to see in this one with it being a little bit darker. Let's have a look. Ah, uh, there you go. Yeah, so that's a mesh bag of plastic media. I think it's K1 or K1 micro. So the water just tumbles through there. The aerobic bacteria will just sort out any of the ammonia and nitrite that might be building up in the system. Although I don't think there will be any of that building up considering how well aerated it is. The stand that I've got each one of these two pipes in is just like a standard packaging shelf stand that you get on eBay. I think it was about 30, 35 quid, might be a little bit more now. Obviously normally it would have shelves in like that. But I've just left the bottom one in, cut a hole, put my two inch pipe through and in the top I put the top on and just cut a, a hole in there just so this thing stays vertical. That looks like I've actually got four pipes but I haven't. On the back I've got a mirror just to bounce the light back. So there's actually only two pipes here and two pipes here. They are just reflections. Now if I can find the links to anything relevant that I've talked about I will put it in the video description and in the pinned comment. I think most of the fittings, like the rubbery fittings, the two inch pipe, uh, the solvent glue that I used to glue the pipe together, I got all that from Cockney Coy. You can get it from builders merchants or online all over the place. Uh, the white pipe is a little bit more difficult to find. I think I might have got that on eBay. So if I can find the link, I'll stick it in the description. Basically anything useful, check out the video description if I haven't got the link it means I've forgotten where I bought it from or just can't find it anymore you know materials are becoming very difficult to get a hold of